Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about some terminology with limits. So we know how to obtain what the limit approaches. You look at the graph or you list out some of the numbers in a numerical table like we covered in the previous video. Now we're going to learn to apply some terminology to that. Sometimes the limit exists and sometimes it doesn't exist. So for doesn't exist we use the abbreviation DNE. The first bit of terminology is a finite number. Remember that rounded parentheses here are non-inclusive, so we are not including infinity here. So any number that's not infinity is called finite. Typical examples include the number 8, the number 6, 0, for example. How about pi? Pi is just a number. It's like 3.14 whatever. Negative 365. E squared. Remember, E is just a number as well. It's like 2.718, etc. Ln of 2, that's like 0.69 or something like that. These are all examples of constants that are not infinity, that lie on the real line, and they're all finite numbers. A limit that is either from the right with the plus sign or from the left with the minus sign. It's said to exist if the value of the limit is a finite number. Let's go through some of the examples in the previous video. We had this limit, which was the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. So the f of x is 1 over x, the a value is infinity. We're approaching from the left. By the way, there's only one way you could get to infinity, which is from the left the value of this limit is zero. This limit exists because zero is a finite number. Zero is not infinity, so this limit exists. Moving on to another one from the previous video, we had the limit as x approaches six from the left of the square root of x plus three. The value of that limit is three. Again, go see the previous video. Three is a finite number. So yes, this limit exists. And here's one that doesn't exist from the previous video. The limit as x goes to zero from the right of one over x. This limit is infinity. That is not on the real line. That is not a finite number. This does not exist. Okay, now we're really getting more into the nitty gritty of terminology for limits. This is the limit as x goes to a. This one down below has neither the plus nor the minus. What do we mean when we say that exists? Okay, there's three conditions that the plus exists, the minus exists, and as a third condition, the left limit is equal to the right limit. So while it seems like a very innocent type of statement, this limit exists. Really, there's a lot built into that. If there's no plus or minus, there's three different things that this limit existing is saying. It's saying that the left one exists and the right one exists and they have to be equal to each other as well, okay? It's a lot of terminology built into one simple statement, the limit exists. In the previous video, we did just look at the limit with no plus or minus, and I didn't mention it at the time because we were just kind of doing a, like the rough idea for limits, but now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Well, remember how to do that is that you look at the graph. This was in the previous video. So you look at the height of the function as the x values get close to 6 from the left, the height approaches 3. We also have here as the x values approach 6 from the right, the height also approaches 3. So what we have in this case is that this limit exists because the left limit exists, the right limit exists, and they're both equal to three. They're equal to each other. Let's look at another example from the previous video. We had this function two over x minus three. How the heck do we do this? Ah, remember, graph the function, go back to graphing the function. If you look back in the previous video, we took the function one over x, we shifted it by three units and we amplified it by two, and we got this graph, right? Remember, you're shifting and you're scaling. So you gotta be able to come up with these graphs. Okay, now look at, let's look at the limit. The x values are approaching three. There's no plus or minus, so I should be evaluating, hmm, does the left one do something different than the right one? We gotta look at the picture and see what happens. Okay, so the x values are approaching three from the left. What happens to the height of the function in that case? 
you got it. It goes to negative infinity. And if the x values approach 3 from the right, then the height of the function goes up to positive infinity. Okay, so it looks like the limit does not exist here. The left doesn't exist, the right doesn't exist, and they're not equal to each other. Okay, so the full limit that we're looking for here does not exist. So we talked about a way of limits not existing. There's actually another way, and I want to explain it to you in this slide. This is kind of an English language, kind of nice version of the, the technical definition of a limit. If it exists, then we can write the limit as x goes to a equals l. But what happens with a limit that exists is that the height of the function is getting very, very close to l. What existing really means in technical language is that no matter how close you want the height of the function to get to the limit l, you can always choose the x values just close to a and all of the resulting x values very very close to a will have the height of the function within whatever distance you specify of l okay if that sounded a little bit confusing that's because this is the technical definition and i've tried to even bring it down a notch into english language let's take a look at a picture here as the x values go off to infinity the height of the function is approaching l and the picture that i've drawn is like an asymptote now suppose that i wanted the height of the function to be very, very close to L, like within 0.1. I wanted all the heights to be within 0.1 of the limit L. Well, what I would have to do is just kind of see where it intersects and make sure that I'm taking my X values past this point of intersection in order to see that everything past that point is within 0.1 of L. If I wanted to get closer to L, I want the heights of the function to be even closer to L, what I would do is I would just lower this line, find a new point of intersection and then my x values would have to go farther out in order to get even closer to l. So why am I covering this more technical definition? The main reason is because I want you to understand why the limit as x goes to infinity of sine of x doesn't exist. Why is that? This thing oscillates up to 1 and 0 and negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. It keeps going and going and going and going. Now does that actually approach anything? No. It does not. You might kind of fool yourself and say, oh, but it keeps hitting one over and over again. Doesn't it just like approach one because it's like one here and then one and then one again and then one again. But the thing is, is that it never gets kind of infinitely close or asymptotically close to one. Every time the height of the graph gets close to one, then it shoots back down to negative one. It goes to zero. It has all these other numbers. It doesn't get infinitely close to one. It continues to oscillate up and down and up and down and up and down. So it doesn't approach anything. So this is a different way that a limit could not exist. And it all comes back to this more technical definition of a limit. Uh, people call this the epsilon delta definition. You can explore it more in the book if you're interested, especially maybe math majors might be interested to understand more of the technical aspects of the epsilon delta definition. Okay, but for our purposes, we just want to really have a good understanding of why it is that the oscillatory function like sine of x in never approaches anything. It doesn't get infinitely close to anything. Okay, so this is another way of not existing for a limit. Alrighty, so that's it for this video. I want you to go back to the previous video and challenge yourself. Flip through all of the examples that we did in the previous video. Ask yourself, does this one exist or does it not exist? Okay, go through and categorize exist, doesn't exist, exist, doesn't exist. Do some extra examples from the book and this is a great time to start making up your own examples. Remember, math is not about regurgitation. It's not about memorizing. Try some stuff out. Maybe you want to graph an exponential function and see what happens with those limits. Try graphing the tangent function. Try graphing a polynomial. Try graphing a piecewise function, right? Make some stuff up. So I hope that you'll challenge yourself and go look for more problems in the book. Check out the homework online and we'll see you in class soon.